looking to take your children on a backpacking trip this summer and not sure if you'd be able to do it on your own? Well, follow along with me as I bring my three daughters backpacking with me in Desolation Wilderness. And please hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I took my three girls, ages 10, 12, and 14, on a backpacking trip through Desolation Wilderness. The trip started at Echo Lake just off of Highway 50 and ended up at Eagle Falls at Emerald Bay on Highway 89. I wanted to make this experience as fun and easy for the girls as possible. So we started with a boat trip across both upper and lower Echo Lakes. This cut off about two and a half miles off the total hike. It's about $15 for the boat one way when it's running. After we got off the boat, we had about a two mile hike to Ralston Lake. Ralston Lake can be a little tricky to find, but if you follow the path along Tamarack Lake, go over a little hill on the other side, as you look down, you'll see Ralston Lake. The total miles from Echo Lake to Eagle Falls is only about 22 miles. But like I said, I wanted to try to make this the easiest and best experience for the girls. So we took our time and split it up between six nights. This trip could easily be done in less nights than that, or even as a single day through and through hike. But knowing my girls, I thought I'd want to split it up. So we walked fewer miles per day and had more time to swim in the lakes and just take our time and rest when needed. After setting up camp, I took a little trip to Cagwin Lake. Again, it's not a well-marked path, but using a map, it's pretty easy to find. After hiking back along Tamarack Lake, there is somewhat of a climb from Tamarack to Haypress Meadows. After that, the hike to Lake Aloha is relatively simple. Lake Aloha is a very popular destination for backpackers. It's only seven and a half miles from Echo Lake, and it spans about a mile and a half along the trail. So even if you happen to snag the very last permit, it's still relatively easy to find a place to camp for the night. The lake is pristine with beautiful islands of granite rock throughout, similar to the Hawaiian Islands, hence the name Lake Aloha. Snow-capped mountains can be seen in the distance, and it's a great place to take off your shoes, dip your feet in the water, or go for a swim. We did this trip at the end of June, so there was still plenty of snow covering the ground in certain areas along the way. There's also a lot of rivers to cross, so I highly recommend waterproof hiking shoes and carrying along a hiking stick. After setting up camp, I took my shoes off to soak my feet in Susie Lake. Within seconds, I was surrounded by small fish. At first, it was a little creepy until I realized that they were eating the dead skin off my feet. The girls joined me in the water and we all had a natural fish pedicure. Afterwards, our feet felt soft and smooth.
This next section from Susie Lake to Dick's Pass was by far the most difficult of the trip. With about 1,680 feet of elevation gain, along the way there are breathtaking views of the Sierras as well as many gorgeous juniper trees. We stopped for lunch at Gilmore Lake and took a swim before heading up the pass. Along the pass, we got a magnificent view of all the lakes we had already passed, as well as a few others, like Half Moon Lake and Lake LeConte. All in all, a backpacking trip through Desolation Wilderness is very doable with children. The trails are well marked for the most part, and there's plenty of water sources all along the way. There are a few river crossing, so the amount of snow from the previous winter will determine how high or fast the water is flowing. There's also a lot of other hikers and backpackers along the trail. So you're never completely isolated. My original plan was to spend our third night at Diggs Lake, but when we got to the pass at 9,400 feet of elevation, the trail was completely covered in snow rather than trying to navigate my way over the snow and risk getting lost i decided to camp on top of the pass for the night with no lake or stream on top i melted and boiled snow to use as drinking water and to cook our dinner with this was a great choice for us as the views were phenomenal we could see on the other side down to Diggs Lake and Lake Fontanellis and all the way to Middle Velma. The sunset over the mountains was also amazing. No one else was on the pass that night, only us and a few grouse. We actually did get a little lost on the way back down the pass to Dick's Lake, so I recommend carrying some sort of GPS device with you. If you use your phone as GPS, there are plenty of solar chargers you can purchase that run anywhere from 20 to 50 bucks. When we finally made it down to Dick's Lake, we took off our packs and had lunch on one of the large rocks that jetted out into the water. Then we went for a swim before continuing on to Lake Fontanellas. Our meals consisted of warm muesli in the mornings and some homemade beef jerky and dried fruit for snacks. I also made several types of high energy bars that we could eat along the way. Our dinners were simple and lightweight. I brought different types of the Knorr brand rice packs like broccoli and cheddar. And other dehydrated foods I got in the bulk section of the market. The girls each filtered their own water using their own Sawyer Squeeze filtration system. These are very small and lightweight, and it's the filtration system that I recommend. 
At Middle Velma Lake, Jade and my 10 year old wanted to set up the tent by herself and a fine job she did at it. We heard there were three bears spotted at this lake the night before, but during our entire backpacking trip, we didn't encounter any. One thing we did run into were a lot of mosquitoes. Be sure so to bring along some repellent and possibly even a mosquito net. It's only one mile from Eagle Lake to Highway 89 where Emerald Bay and Eagle Falls are, but I got a permit to stay at Eagle Lake for the night anyway. Since it is only a mile in, it gets pretty crowded during the day. But once the crowds are gone, other than a few other backpackers, we pretty much had the whole place to ourselves. On this final night, the girls decided to sleep in their sleeping bags under the stars. Eagle Lake is one of my favorite trails to hike when I visit Tahoe in the winter. Even though the ground is covered in snow, you can still make your way to the lake following along other people's footprints.